All right, now we're recording. So, um, then the last two, a four milli unit cannot be the representative particle of a four milli unit. You can't have the same thing be its own representative particle. So, just gotta be careful of that. But if we look on the mole map, the representative particle circle, we have three things that go into that. We have atoms. So in here, we've got atoms. We've got molecules. And we've got formula units. So those are the three things that are representative particles. Ion, we have it's their own special circle. So sometimes I call representative particles RP. And the ions have their own unique circle. So representative particle breaks into an ion. And um, that means that we can't use formula unit for formula unit. The formula unit on like number four, that's the only part from the RP circle that's numbered over there. So number four actually is A, because formula units can break down into ions, and molecular compounds, or sorry, ionic compounds, number three, break into the formula units. So the correct answers for the matching should be D, C, D, A. Okay, D, C, D, A. So um, that, a lot of people just skip that part, so we just want to make sure we have that before we move on to all of the math stuff. So um, for the math, for the rest of the worksheet, we only have to do four, so we're going to do four together, um, that we are going to get all the answers together today, and then you can turn it in. But in order to solve it correctly, you have to use the mole map. So a couple more things of what we need to do with this one, okay? Every time we solve problems, it's like we just pull back the line, right? Okay, so there are some steps that we follow every time with all of the problems we're doing today, all the problems we're going to continue to do in chapter 10, all that kind of stuff, okay? The first step, so these are the steps to solve, and this is something that we will write down on our mole maps in class when we come back in person. But if you have a mole map handy and you want to write this down, you can. The first step is to figure out your start and end. And so the start is the circle that you're starting in on this map. And the end is the circle that you're traveling to on this map. And so we get the start and the end from the words of the problem, and we will see that in all of our examples that we do today. Okay, so start and end, first thing we figure out. Then, step two, um, we set up the first parenthesis, um, and with that first parenthesis, that turns into the given number, the number given over one. And the one in the bottom is just a spot filler. It doesn't actually have a unit. It's just making sure that our first number is in the numerator for our problem. Okay. Then after we set up our first parenthesis with the given number over one, then step three, um, we use the mole map. To set up the next parentheses. And sometimes it'll just be one more, sometimes it might be two or three more, but we just use the mole map to set up our other parentheses. And then after we set up all of our parentheses, then step four is to solve for our problem. Okay? So we're going to follow these steps on every single problem we do together today, where we're going to do step one, step two step three, step four. And it's a really good plan to just follow that all the way through. If you don't need to list the start and the end because you understand it, that's great. Personally, I need to do it for myself, so that's why I do it in every problem. And it might be helpful for you to do it. 
but that's not completely necessary to be done. Um, but this usually if you follow these steps, you will get it right. So that's why we try to do it. All right, are, are we okay if I move forward? Or are we still writing this down? I don't wanna go too fast. Good to go. Okay, we're just gonna start with number five. And then we'll we'll just pick the total of four. So if you guys have any that you see that you want to definitely make sure that we do, let me know. But I'm just gonna start with number five and we'll get through four of them. Okay. So number five, how many atoms are in 2.01 moles of aluminum? So the first thing we said that we're gonna do is we are gonna figure out our start and our end. That's the first step for the problem. So the start is the unit that's on the number, the given number. So we are given 2.01 moles. So that moles tells me that I'm gonna start in the mole circle. Remember, I'm, I probably said this on the notes, MOL is the abbreviation for moles. You don't have to, um, you don't wanna just put like M, because that's meters. You don't want to say ML because that's milliliters. So if you want to abbreviate moles, MOL is the correct way to abbreviate moles. Okay. Then the end is what the question is asking us to solve for. So the question asks, how many atoms? So that means that we're going to end when we solve for atoms. Now, the whole purpose of our start and our end are really to help us figure out how to travel on the mole map. Okay, so if we look at the mole map quickly, I don't know why I keep saying that. Um, on the mole map, the representative particles are where the atoms are located. Okay, so I'm going to say RP in parentheses so that I know that technically. When I'm solving for atoms, I'm really traveling to the RP circle. So I'm going to say RP next to the atom. Okay, just so that you don't get confused about where you're going to. So that was the first step. Step one, figure out start and end. So step two, now we're going to set up our first parenthesis with the given number over one. So the number we're given in this problem is 2.01 moles. So on the first parenthesis, I'm going to say 2.01 moles over 1. And the 1 is just a spot filler. There's no unit on that 1. It's just putting our number in the numerator. Okay, now the next parenthesis the next thing we do, we said step three, use the mole map to set up the next parentheses, and then we'll solve. So this is where that whole start and end comes into play. We said we're starting in the mole circle, and we're going to end at the atoms or the RP circle. So this is where like it's really nice if you have the actual paper, because if you are starting with the mole, and we're going to travel to the RP, two representative particles, the arrow that you follow tells you what to put in that next parenthesis. Okay, so we're traveling from the left to the right, so we need to make sure that we follow that top arrow from left to right, and so what is there, this right here, is going to be what we place in our next parenthesis, where we put Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, over one mole. So in here we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd over one mole. Now technically um, it said particles 
on the mole map, but we're not going to label this particle. So the particle is very generic and it can mean any of the representative particles, but we want to deal with our special particle and that is atom. So for me, I'm going to label my 6.02 times in the 23rd as atom. So now, by setting up this parenthesis, we can cancel away the mole, okay? Because remember, if they're on top and on bottom, we did this kind of thing in chapter three. Um, if they're on top and on bottom, then that means that they cancel out, they get rid of each other. And then we are done because we have atoms as our unit, which is what we want to solve for. We said that's where we're going to end. So now we can solve. And I don't have very much space, so I'm not going to write everything out. But remember, when they're both in the numerator, you multiply across. If they're on opposites, then you divide. But in this case, you're going to multiply because we've got both numbers in the numerator. Okay? And so this is where you're going to need that double E button on your calculator, whether it's your phone calculator whether it's a scientific calculator that you have, or if you're using like the Desmos calculator, whatever you're using, um, remember the times 10, we take the place of that with our double E button. So I'm gonna read it out loud how you should type it in, but just know how to do it for your calculator, okay? So 2.01 times, 6.02 double E 23 equals. And so like this is what mine, because remember mine are like the not the cheapest version of a scientific calculator. Mine looks like 1.21002 to the 24. You might, if you have a nice calculator, it might say like E to the 24, or maybe it says times 10 in really small letters to the 24th power. Um, but that's what that 24 is. Remember that that is um, times 10 to the 24th power, like that. Can Desmos, I've heard, is like it's a it's an online calculator that um, some math classes use for like graphing and stuff. I've never actually used it myself, um, but it's just another option if you don't like your phone calculator or what have you. So it's Desmos is just another online calculator. Okay, Madison, no, we do not write all the whole decimal. We need to round to significant figures, which we haven't done that in a long time, like since chapter five. So yes, that is what you would say. So in order to Round it correctly, looking at our original number, we have to see how many digits are significant there, and that's what we round it to. So since we have 2.01, that is three significant figures. So we're only going to keep the fourth times 10 three digits that are significant. So Madison got it right. Two point, or sorry, 1.21. 1.21, and then we do need to include times 10 to the 24th power as a part of our answer. That's important to include. And then the unit is atom. So 1.21 times 10 to the 24th atom is the correct answer for number five. And the way that I need to label it atoms is because we said that we're going to end with atom. Okay, so that's one of our four that we've got to do. We've got to do three more. Um, let's do number six because that deals with the ion circle. So that's just a little different, um, but it's still the same process. We still do all of the same stuff. And so it's going to mirror a lot of what we did in number five. We can get this worksheet on It's Learning, correct? Yes, the worksheet is on It's Learning. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you could always just write it down on your own paper 
and turn it in that way. It's okay to do that too. Okay, number six. How many ions are in 3.24 times 10 to the 24th per million units of calcium chloride? So starting our end, the star is the unit on the number that's given. So we have 3.24 times 10 to the 24th, 4 million units. So that means that we're going to start with 4 million units. I abbreviate 4 million units as FUN because we have so much fun in chemistry class. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm funny. Um, formula units, the circle that those are in on the mole map is the RP circle, formula unit. So the RP circle is technically where we're going to go or where we're starting. So we're starting at RP, so I'm going to say RP in parentheses, just so I know what we're talking about, right? And then the end is what the question is asking us to solve for. And it's asking how many ions. So that means we're going to end when we reach the circle that contains ions. And ions have their own unique circle up at the top. Let me erase this guy. Uh, so ions are up here. RP is down here. So that is going to be important when we figure out our second parentheses. Okay? But our first parentheses is the given number over one. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to say 3.24 times 10 to the 24th sun over one. And remember that one, just like how at number five, there's no unit on that number one. The number one is just a space filler so that we can do that. No, Madison, good question. Like the calcium chloride and the aluminum on our problems for today, for today's worksheet, don't mean anything. After we move on from the RP circle on the mole map, they will mean something. But for now, it's just extra information that you technically don't need to worry about. Good question. Okay, so back to this. What am I doing? Okay, we set up our first parenthesis over one. Now, the second parenthesis, just like how we have two parentheses in number five, we're going to have two parentheses for number six. So. This is where we use the mole map to tell us what to do. And that's where we have our start and our end. Okay? So we said we're starting in the RP circle and we're traveling to ions. So over here, we're starting with RP and we're traveling up to ions. So the arrow that we follow this time is going to be the arrow that's pointing up, which is the left arrow. Okay? And so since we're going to follow that arrow, What's next to that arrow will become our parentheses in our problem. So we're going to put Avogadro's number of ions over one button. That's what it looks like here. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd ions over one button. So now the fun can't pull away, so apparently we're not having fun anymore. Um, but that leaves us with the ions, which is what we want to end with. So that's good. And we can now fall. So um, next, just like in number five, both numbers are in the numerator. So we are going to just multiply across um, to get our solve, get our problem solved. What are we solving on? And um, we have to use the double E button for both numbers. Okay. So here we go. 
I'll still say it out like how I how I, how you're supposed to type it in. 3.24 double E 24 times 6.02 double E 23 equals. And you should get like 1.95048 to the 48 power. That's what my calculator looked like. So we have to write it correctly though, round it and all that before we're done. So um, 48 becomes times 10 to the 48. And then to know how many digits to keep for the decimal portion, we look back at our original number Okay, and 3.24 is three significant figures, just like number five. So we only keep the 1.95. So 1.95 times 10 to the 48, and our unit is ion. For that. You guys are having good questions. I appreciate your questions. Every time I ask for questions in first hour, they all just like don't say anything. So I'm glad that you guys are asking questions. Keep asking them if you want, if you have them. Um, we're going to do number seven. I hope you're okay with that. But the reason why I want to do number seven is in five and six, you know, we had to multiply both times. Number seven. It, we, it ends up we have to divide, and I want to show you what it looks like when we divide. Okay, so um, we'll do number seven, then we'll pick one from the back, and we'll be done. And you can just turn it in because we did all the answers, and you know all the answers are right together. Okay, so we'll do seven, then we'll pick one from the back. So number seven says calculate the number of moles and 4.21 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of sulfur dioxide. So our start circle is the unit on the number. We have molecules. I think I said this in the notes video, but I abbreviate molecules, M-O-L-E-C, molec, because if you put M-O-L, it looks like moles. If you put M, it looks like meters. So I abbreviate it a little bit if you want to abbreviate it like me. Molecules, just so that we know what we're talking about, are in the circle, the RP circle, just like the, I'm going to erase all this because we don't need this. Um, they're in the RP circle just like atoms and formula units, other things we've been talking about. Molecules are in the RP circle. So I'm going to label RP so I don't forget. Okay, then the end is where we are traveling to or what the question is asking us to solve for and it asks us to solve, calculate the number of moles. So this time we're going to go to the mole circle. We're going to be done when we solve for moles. And moles has its own circle. Okay, so now that we've figured out start and our end, just like in five and six, the first parenthesis is going to be the number that's given over one. So we'll have the 4.21 times 10 to the 23rd. Molic over one. So, so far everything has been the same as five and six. But when we set up our next parenthesis, this is where it's going to change. So to figure it out, we're going to look at our mole mass. We're going to start in the RP circle with molecules, and we're going to travel to moles 
and see what the arrow says to do. So we are starting at RP and we're traveling up to mole. That means we have to follow this bottom arrow because that's the one that points towards mole. So that means that this right here is going to be what we put in our second parentheses. So we have one mole over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Remember like in number five, how I didn't say particles, I said atoms. So even though it says the word particles, we are not gonna write particles, we're writing the particle we're dealing with, and the particle we're dealing with is molecule. That way, we can cancel away the molecules. If you just put particles, it technically wouldn't cancel out. So that's why we need to um, say that. Okay. So now, do you notice, and like moles is what we wanted to solve for. So moles is right there. So it's time to solve. But do you notice how this time, the second parenthesis, the Avogadro number is in the denominator? When it's in the denominator, that means that we're going to divide instead of multiply. Um, and so the number that's on the top is what goes in first and divided by the number on the bottom. But if you need to reduce it, it's going to be 4.21 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If you need to see it like that, what I've done is I just like simplified across so that I could figure that part out. Okay. So, and in this case, it doesn't always happen, but the times 10 to the 23rd technically cancel each other out. So, um, when we divide, I'm going to say it to divide the both with the double E's and all that stuff just so that we are getting the hang of that again because it's been a couple months since we've done that. Um, we have 4.21 double E 23. Divided by 6.02 double E 23 equals. And there should be no times 10 this time. We should have canceled that out. And the correct answer, um, we round to three significant digits again because of the 4.21. It's less than one. The zero in the beginning does not count as a sig fig. So we have to go three digits afterwards. So I have 0.699 mole is the answer. 0.699 mole. All right. So it's still the same process, but it just sets up a little bit differently when you have to divide. So I wanted to show one of them. Okay. So we've gotten three out of our four done. We only have to do one more from the back side. Does anybody have one in mind that they would like to do from the back side? Any? any? Number 10. Number 10? Number yeah. 10 doozy so that's probably a good one to do if we want to do a hard one just to see what it looks like is it okay if i scroll up or are we still copying stuff down so number 10 lots of space because we might need that lots of space um but we still start the same way First step is figuring out our start and our end. Okay, so for number 10, we want to calculate the number of moles in 5.20 times 10 to the 23rd ions. So we're starting with ions. And we want to calculate the number of moles. So we're going to end 
when we get to the mole circle. Ion, I think which one? Okay, now let me just show you. Well, okay, first we'll set up our first parenthesis. So our first parenthesis, just like before, number over one. So 5.20 times 10 to the 23rd ion over one. Okay, but then planning our attack, planning our movement on the mole mass, if we're starting in ions and ending in moles, ions is up here, moles is down here. There's no direct link between those two circles. If there isn't a direct link, that means we can't go that way. We have to travel along the arrow route. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from ions down to RP first, and then we'll go from RP up to moles. So this is how I know that it's going to be more than two parentheses, because I am touching more than two circles on paper while I'm traveling. Okay, so just so that we see, take me a little plan. We're going to start in the ion circle, then we're going to go to RP, and then we're going to go to moles. So whatever it says between ions and RP, that is going to be our second parenthesis. And then we're going to have a third parenthesis, and that'll be whatever it says between RP and moles. And with this one, some people get that you're supposed to travel and have three parentheses, but going in the correct direction is very important. Okay, so uh, let's see what we have to do. From ions to RP, we are following the, the right arrow because that's what's going to travel down to RP. So this one sun over Avogadro's number of ions, that will go in our second parentheses. So one fun, and one fun. So by setting that up, one fun over 6.02 times to the 23rd ions, that allows us to cancel away the ions. Okay, technically, yes, you could stop here and solve and then keep going. But personally, I like to just set it all up big time and then solve at the end. So that's what we're going to do because I'm giving you the answer. Um, so now for our third parenthesis, and the reason why we know we're not done is because currently we have fun, but we want moles. So we have to keep going until we end with moles at the end, okay? So um, we said our third parenthesis is going to be between RP and moles. So down here, going from the RP circle to moles, we're going to follow this bottom arrow and put the one mole over Avogadro's number of particles on that section. So one mole over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd And the particle we're dealing with this time is the formula unit because we have fun here and we need to cancel out the fun. So we would put fun there as the label. Fun goes away and now we have moles, which is what we wanted to end with in the first place so we can solve. All right, now, this is where it gets tricky, okay? Both Avogadro numbers are in the bottom. So that means that we are going to, we're gonna divide and then divide again, Madison. So uh, we're gonna divide these first two numbers. And then once we get that answer, then we are gonna divide again. So I'm gonna tell you how I do it in my calculator because you can just leave this number from this first division and then hit it like equals and then hit divide and keep going. Um, but you could always like write it down and then reset up, but it's divide and divide. So here we go, okay? 
we've got 5.20, double E23, divided by, so we're doing this first, first divided by, right here, 6.02, double E23. Go ahead and hit equals. So this right here, from this first part, it equals uh, point eight six three seven eight seven blah 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 blah. You don't really have to write that down, but I'm just showing so hopefully you know you got it right, right? But just keep it in your calculator because now we're going to do the next division. So it's going to have to divide again because this number is in the in the bottom in the denominator. So that means that whatever we got for the first two parentheses, we have to divide by the third parentheses. So we hit divide by 6.02 double E 23. So the final answer is 1.434862755 to the negative 24. If we didn't divide the last parenthesis and you multiplied, you would end up with the same, like the beginning number. And that's where we're wrong. Okay. So the negative 24 is going to be our exponent. So it's times 10 to the negative 24. And looking up at 5.20, that is three significant figures. So 1.43. Times 10 to negative 24. We will have, so moving forward, we are going to have a lot more problems with like three or maybe even four parentheses. Um, but until we get there, we're just going to have like a lot of times it'll just be two just to get us where we need to go. So that's a good question. Do you guys have any other questions? So we have um, solved all four problems that you need to do on the bottom. I started recording halfway through the well, the matching part. Sorry about that. Um, but so the um, you should be able to just turn it in as is right now because you have done all of the required problems for this worksheet. Okay. Um, if you want to try more by yourself, you can. But I'm only going to grade the first four I see. So the four that we've done is good. And I, um, 